Last night I had relapse due to PTSD, anxiety issues I have. It was pretty bad. Um, woke up crying in the middle of the night. Welcome to my channel. My name's Amanda. Welcome to my channel. My name's Amanda. Um, some makeup. Um, just want to do a little bit of self-care today since last night I had relapse due to PTSD, anxiety issues I have. It was pretty bad. Um, woke up crying in the middle of the night. Really just a bad episode of reliving something that hasn't happened to me for years and years. So figured today would be a good day for self-care instead of, I don't know, instead of not doing anything for myself and wallowing and I, you know, not a makeup artist or anything like that. I just learned from YouTube like everybody else and friends, family, but it gives me a distraction so that I can kind of talk through what happened and, you know, I've been doing some videos on here of being in right here and, um, it can be a little stressful sometimes because you never know who's going to be in your car or anything, but I don't feel like this is really what brought this on. Um, to me, sometimes I know what the triggers are and sometimes I don't. Um, I try and figure them out to figure out like coping things to do, but it doesn't always work. Um, I also have medication I use, but I'm not a big medication person, so I have stuff that's like every day I take, but then I have stuff that's kind of like emergency, like if the PTSD is really bad, but I, my goal was to not be, you know, um, just medicated all the time, so um, I do have that, so I'm glad that I have those uh, medications and everything because, you know, that does help, but, um, it still is difficult. Medicine doesn't solve everything. You're still going to have, you know, those problems. So, boy, that was a rough morning. Haven't had that happen in a while. Okay, so I did get these. My husband got them for me for Christmas. They're from Too Faced. Uh, Too Faced, yeah. There's like a New York one. I think this one is Brazil. Like a Rio one. Yeah. And this is the Christmas in Sydney one. Which I haven't used these very much, but I think I'm feeling the Sydney one. Because it's got some really pretty colors in there. Just something bright to make myself feel better. Um, let's see, um, I have this Urban Decay one, I don't use it quite as much, maybe for like work and stuff. Oh, that's not the shadow, here's my other one. This one is Tarte, they're like Pro Remix. I might use this one too, I don't know. This one I use a lot, you can tell. It has a lot of really, really cool colors in it. And it has another mirror. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'll use this one and this one. I'm just going to use concealer. I don't know if this is the best thing to use, but I'm using it for an eye primer because uh, I don't have an eye primer right now. So, oh my gosh. Sorry guys if you see my mirror. I am so freaking blind without my glasses on. I just have to have this mirror so close to my face. All right, so let me just get this on here. I try and hide my notorious bags under my eyes. <laughs> oh wait, I think I already messed up. Oh well, I don't even care now. I don't care. This one is, yeah, Elf. 16 hour camera concealer in fair beige so we're just gonna go ahead and use that one and oh my gosh 
gosh, I'm so terrible with this, guys. So sorry. Boy. Okay. I don't know. Just do something basic to get started. Who cares? Yeah. So it was pretty bad. Um, woke up in the middle of the night crying, reliving something very terrible. I actually woke up out of my sleep saying no a bunch of times over and over again. And was crying and freaking out so bad my dog was like licking my hand, trying to wake me up. Poor Banjo. He's a good boy though. Um, oh yeah. yeah. So I'm glad my dog was there. Um, after it kind of takes a bit, you realize this is a dream. You realize, hey, you know, because mine came from my childhood. So I came out of that dream thinking I was that, you know, nine year old again. But, you know, woke up and was kind of realizing that was not what was happening. And then immediately called my husband kind of freaking out um because i i don't know i just needed to let him know what was happening so and he helped calm me down too kind of like reminding me to be present helping me to be grounded so that was that was pretty good um so talked to him on the phone for a while and he knows I have relapses. I just haven't had a bad one in a long time. It's probably been about four, maybe five years since that's happened. And then, um, I started to feel a little better. Um, but he was still at work getting home from work so he just kind of talked to me for a little bit and then I finally realized hey you know what I'm hung let's eat something let's get up let's not try and fall back asleep because I had a feeling that this would just carry on because in the past that's usually what's happened because sometimes this happens to me when I'm awake and I I've had where I've like kind of not fall and fall, but just kind of have your knees get weak and kind of just fall to the floor. And like you're crying and feeling really insecure and unsafe and a lot of fear. And that, that can happen to me when I'm awake. I, I really don't know what all the triggers are. But just the grounding of what can you touch, what can you feel. And then doing breathing exercises. That helps a lot too. So I um, use my Calm app and I do some breathing exercises and there's some ones that are for panic for emergency because that's the other thing is like there's a lot of panic happening too because when you go through this you're thinking you're actually going through it. You're not thinking of it like this is a memory or this is something else like that this is something that's already happened you're living it like it's happening to you right now so it's just really hard to get out of it when that happens so I don't know it's just a little frustrating because um, oh my gosh I don't even know what I'm doing guys I really don't thought I had a plan, but I have no idea what I'm doing. <sighs> so like for me, a lot of my most kind of traumatic stuff happened to me when I was uh, little. Some stuff as I was older, but a lot of it was when I was a kid. I really didn't have any control over my environment or had adults around me where I felt like, um, you know, that they would listen to me. So. It was pretty hard sometimes to deal with that. So, uh, 
You know, you kind of have to get over the fact you, that, like you say to yourself, like, I'm not this kid anymore. I'm not this kid. I'm not in this moment. Sometimes that makes it worse. So it helps when someone else is like, what can you feel? What can you touch? What does the room look like? It causes you to focus on other things besides your trauma. And I found that actually helps a lot because it's like, oh, I am this grown up person. I'm not this kid anymore. I don't have to uh, live in that fear. So. Um, I was really thankful that, uh, you know, to my husband that he could provide that for me. So it helped me get out of that panic and out of that memory. So and then like, cause he had to get off work and stuff. So he had to hang up the phone. So I kind of waited a little bit. Uh, and then he called me when he was on his way home. He's so sweet. He offered to pick up some food cause I kept saying I was hungry, but then I never made anything. Um, so I thought that was really, really sweet of him to do that. So I thought, wow, that was really sweet of him to do that. See if this works. I don't know if this is going to work. I just really wanted pink here. So, it did start to feel better, but, you know, it wasn't even about him getting home, and it wasn't even about not feeling like I wasn't safe when he was here. It was really, like, kind of like after a hurricane or a tornado or something rips through a place, and you just need to, you get, you have, like, the shock. I think maybe that's more kind of what panic is, is the shock that what just happened and what you just came out of. And you, you need, after you get yourself to calm down, because you can feel your heart racing. My heart was racing. My temperature was up. Um, uh, my blood sugar wasn't too bad. I mean, I'm diabetic, so I always check that. But blood sugar wasn't as high as I thought that it might be because stress can make it go through the roof. But, um, oh, yeah, it wasn't too bad, but it was like, you still are like coming down from the shock where you just need to process everything that you went through, everything that just happened. So I was doing a little bit of that too. And Just kind of, I don't know, getting myself to a place where I could, uh, you know, process what had happened. Because sometimes what happens is you don't get that, and then you just kind of live in panic mode. I think I would pink under here too. And I do a lot of pink today, I think. Something bright and cheery. Um, maybe 80s is fine. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing now. This is hard to do this in talk. I never realized quite how hard it is. Especially if you know what you're doing. Not like me. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. But, um,. Just like the slightest steps. Oh yeah, we're going for 80s jazzercise here, people. <laughs> I think this is what's happening. Alright, I don't know what's going on. Um, 
I get so distracted with doing this, I lose where I am. Oy. Yes, I felt like that extra time just gave me some time to focus on processing what had happened, to deal with the shock that had happened, and um, realize that I'm okay, that I'm safe, and to start processing the memory. Because what happened is something, not just something I hadn't remembered for a long time, but I think, like, since it happened, I don't think that I remembered this for for a long, long time, like 10, 15 plus years. And it answered some questions for me. Um, because when I was younger, we did a lot of stuff in court. And um, I was kind of young at the time. So I felt like some people listened to me. I felt like some didn't. I felt like Um, I felt like my voice wasn't important. Like, I was too young to really say anything, so it didn't really matter. So, it was kind of like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes they want to make you feel like you're important and tell you, like, they want to hear what you say, but really you know that you're not important. And you're kind of like, why am I even bothering wasting my time? so dumb sometimes so I just think about that too where it's like even after when I was younger and I came out of this that lawyers judges people I told but because I was under 10 at the beginning of everything it, what I said wasn't even like anything admissible in court or anything so it was like I dealt with people oh gosh this is for my brows I dealt with people making me feel like what I had to say was important. You know, they would use those words like just to get me to talk, just to get me to say what happened. But then those same people would accuse me of lying, not telling the truth. So it kind of makes you after a while, you just don't want to talk about stuff. Like, not to court, not to counselors, not to anybody. Because you're just thinking, okay, who's the next person who's going to say that I'm this, like, big fat liar, right? So, that's a lot of what happened with me. You know, you just get, you get tired of talking about it because it's painful. You get tired of people, you know, not believing you. Well, I'm probably going to go too heavy with this, but oh well, who cares? Um, so, I think that's another reason why I deal with kind of these triggers or what I call relapses, but just kind of out of nowhere, all of a sudden you have some memory or, or you know, being reminded of something that happened forever ago. And, well, you know, the first thing I'm mixing is like, I don't remember this. I'm, and, you know, I don't know. Oh my gosh, I guess I'm getting kind of panicky even talking about it right now, but. Oh. Oh. Do not. Oh, that sucks. I don't have a sharpener for this. Dang it. This isn't my good purpley one. I thought this would be so perfect. That's my only white color that isn't black. Dang it. Alright, well, whatever. Guess I'll just have to do black instead. I'm feeling the unicorn vibes a little bit with this one. Oh, so. I think sometimes when I don't want to talk about stuff or deal with the emotional impact it's had on me, it's because of stuff like that. It's like, no one believed you then, everybody treated you like, like you were incapable of telling the truth. And I think sometimes too, people just don't want to believe you. Like, they want to think a certain way about a person. And... 
They don't want that to be challenged. They don't want to have to see that person in a different light. So if you have something that goes against that, they really don't want to believe it. Especially if it seems kind of far-fetched. But, you know, I think we see that happen. People in powerful positions or people in positions in the community, you know? People don't want to believe it. I've seen stuff on TV shows and different stuff where it's like they were a teacher or counselor or just someone who volunteered in a lot of uh, organizations and stuff. Also a side note, since I do watch like Bailey Siri and these other channels that are friend a lot, not only are they usually like upstanding people that could be like abusers and stuff, but straight up serial killers, like people who just seem so normal, there's so many of those stories on her channel of these kind of people where they have this like secret hidden life that, you know, maybe, uh, you know, well, all kinds of abuse, but even like people who are murderers and stuff. And they, like, no one knows about them for a long time. Because people can't, I think generally people want to believe that how they perceive someone is the truth about how they are. And they're really reluctant to want to believe someone that says something different about them.